Good afternoon, everyone. I've got another recipe for you. I'm going to put my thing down. Um, it's a good chia seed, a, chia, a blueberry chia seed jam. Um, and if anybody loves chia seeds and blueberries, this is going to be a good, a good jam. I've got to keep stirring this for a little bit. I got it on low, it says. So they get soaked, low heat. Got to get them all soaked. Welcome to everybody coming on. And I'm going to go ahead and share this out myself. Hi, good to see you. Welcome. I'm going to go ahead and share this out on Facebook and Twitter, if you don't mind. I'm going to, I'll be right with you. I'm sharing this out, and I'll be right with you. There we go. Okay. Welcome to everybody coming in, and thank you for sharing this out. Um, this is going to be a very good recipe. Um, as you can see, my <laughs> chia seeds are getting soaked into the into the water. It's on low heat. Then I'm going to add my brown sugar. They call for brown sugar, but I don't have brown sugar. I've got coconut sugar. Um, because I don't have any brown sugar. Um, let it cook for about two minutes. Okay. I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to let it cook for about two minutes. And I'm going to set my timer here on my, my hair. Okay. Alright, I forgot to do it. There we go. Hi to everybody coming in. Um, this is my, this is a, put coconut sugar in my chia seeds and in the milk. I start with a cup and a half of milk, a half a cup of chia seeds. And I'm going to cook this for about two minutes. Then I'm going to take it off the heat. And I'm going to add the fruit and cook it for, for five minutes. So cook this for about two minutes, then add the fruit. Because this has to be on low heat. You don't want it on real high heat. And I'll raise it up a little bit when I put the fruit in. Raise it up a little bit now. Anyway, raise it up just a little bit. Uh, welcome to everybody coming in, and thank you for sharing this out. I don't know where everybody's been the last few days, but the last couple of days I've had some pretty poor, poor showings as far as people coming in here. I don't know what's been happening, but hopefully it'll be better today. Um, I can get people in here interested in, in making a chia seed jam, chia seed and blueberry jam. Hoping I can. Might put this down a little bit further. Welcome to Periscope for the very first time. Okay, I'll put this down just a little bit better. There we go. Welcome to Periscope for the very first time. Welcome to everybody coming in. You can see the chia seeds are all soaked up in the water. You've got to keep stirring it because you don't want it to, you don't want it to burn, don't want it to stick. There's just few ingredients. Just grab your just your water, your chia seeds, your sugar, and your blueberries or mixed berries. They call for mixed berries, but I didn't happen to have mixed berries, so I just used a. Okay, now I can add my blueberries. Two cups of blueberries. I'm going to go ahead and. There we go. And I'm going to set this for five minutes. And I use frozen blueberries. And as time goes on, I'll, I'll try to mash this a little bit. Try to mash the blueberries up a little bit. Mash it here. Easier just to use it, use it with a potato masher versus a fork. It can't it says not to mash them all, but leave some some um, whole. But I'm gonna try to mash as much as I can. Hi, good to see you. Welcome, welcome. This is gonna be a chia seed jam.
these were frozen berries, so I have to let this cook for a little bit. Oh, I forgot to press my timer. There we go. I guess it's going to cook a little longer because <laughs> I forgot to put the timer. There we go. So if it cooks a little longer than five minutes, that's all right. Oh, it doesn't it, though? Looks good, too. Doesn't it? It looks real good. Look at that. Of course, it has to go in the refrigerator, but I have to let it completely cool before I can put that in the refrigerator. Um, so I'm going to get my... Get this out so I can set it on here, set my pan on here, and let it cool off before I put it in the refrigerator. And then this is the jar I hope to put it in if it's big enough. If it's not, i got other jars that are, are bigger. And I'll put this on my toast in the morning with peanut butter. Oh, that's going to be so good. So really good. So good. I'm going to try to mash some of this with a spoon maybe a little bit. <clears throat> Welcome to Periscope. Welcome, welcome to those that are coming in, coming in here. Thank you for sharing this out. <clears throat> Thank you for inviting your followers. I do appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much. I do appreciate that. Thank you for the hearts as well. I do appreciate appreciate it all. Just gonna leave this cook for about five minutes and then I'll take it off and put it on my and it has to cool before I can put it in the refrigerator. This could be a nice jam. Isn't that gonna be nice? Look at that. Nice jam. Once it cools in the refrigerator, then it'll set up a little bit better and it'll look more like jam. Yeah, not getting any comments, but maybe I'll get more people in as this time's going on. Feel free to share this out and invite your followers. Maybe we'll get more people in here. I inv I shared it out and I invited followers, so maybe I'll do another share again. There we go. see it's, it's coming out pretty good consistency Got about a minute and 25 seconds to go want this on real real high heat you don't want this burning so if I didn't put it on real high heat I just kept it on medium heat <laughs> welcome back Nikki I think some people are having a hard time staying on oh no People must be out and about today, I guess. Because <laughs> normally I have a lot more people in here than this. But maybe it will as time goes. I'm not, I'm not going to worry about it. Welcome, Jason. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for um, sharing out and inviting your followers. Thank you for the hearts. Oh, it does, doesn't it? That's going to look real good, too. 
Um, this has to cool before I can put it in the jar. But as you can see, this is going to be a jam. Look at that. Once it once it sets up in the refrigerator, then it will it'll be a different consistency. Okay, I'm going to turn this off. Okay, turn my burner off. And I'm going to set it over here, and I'm going to put myself back up so you can see. There we go. So you're not staring them. There we go. There. Now, I can tip up. There's as my as my jam. As you can see, it's going to have to cool off. I'm going to let it cool for a while. And then I'm going to put it in put it in my jar and set it in the refrigerator. Welcome to everybody coming in. Thank you for sharing this out. This is going to be a nice jam. Um, it's a jam that I've never made before. I'm not, I wanted to make a jam. And let me taste it. I know it's going to be a little hot, but I'm going to see if I can get a taste of what it's going to taste like. Mmm, yes. Very good. Should have been on the hotter heat because it's not real hot. It's on the cool, on the warm, cool, but I still have to cool it off because the pan's hot. So, um, this is going to be a real nice jam. As you can see, you can see the consistency. Look at it. See? Looks real nice. I, I know it does, doesn't it? It really does. I'll put it in my jar after it cools off a little more, and we'll see if I can get it in here. Um, yeah, it would. It doesn't say to use arrowroot because this has to go in the refrigerator. Um, I could put a little bit of arrowroot in it to th help thicken it up quicker. I, you give That's a good idea. Let me take, put a little bit in there. Um, although it doesn't... Although it doesn't, it doesn't call for that. It doesn't call for that, but I could put a little bit in to help. You're right, arrowroot does help thicken it up a little bit. Because you want it thicker, put it in the refrigerator, it'll thicken it right up. And as it gets cold, it'll thicken up. I mean, this, I mean, no, no recipe is set in stone anyway. Whoops, we'll probably a little bit more arrowroot than I needed. But you know something, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm getting it all over everything, I'll set this out. My counter off. Yeah, that'll thicken it up. It'll make it nice and thick. And thank you for the suggestion. I forgot about that. I do have tapioca works the same way. Tapioca flour and arrowroot pretty much all work the same same way. In fact, you know something? I might I might just put it back on the I might put it back on the burner and maybe cook it down just a little bit more because it's not really as hot as it should be. Let me put this, we put it up on high to kind of get it going a little bit. So I can just keep stirring it and then we'll see what happens. Now I know as I put it in the refrigerator, it's going to get, it'll get thicker and it'll be no problem. But it's going to, it's, it's going to be okay, I think. Once, like I said, once you put it in the refrigerator and it gets cold, it'll, it'll thicken up too. Of course, like I said, the arrowroot does help and we want it to be a thick consistency. That's for sure. Let me step away a minute. Okay. Try to see if I can get this. Just a little bit. Cook a little bit more. It doesn't really have to cook a lot because your the blueberries were frozen, but I want to get them um, cooked down just a little bit, I think. Of course, you can. I mean, if anybody makes this, they can put arrowroot in if they want to. Arrowroot is not going to. It's not going to change the effectiveness of it, no whatsoever. It's going to make it really nice. So, and like I said, no recipe is set in stone anyway. You can do with do your recipe. As you see fit, I'm just gonna kind of stir this around for a little bit. Not have to cook it for not do it for very long, but get it a little warm. Let's see if that'll help. Because when I tasted it, it just didn't, it was almost cold. You don't want that. Of course, it's got to be a cold jam, but to cook it, you want a little warmth in it. Oh, that's getting, there, it's getting a little hot now. 
I think I'll turn it off. And I'll turn it up here. Raise this back up. There we go. Now, it's nice and hot now. <laughs> so it's good consistency. So there we go. So it that'll make a real good jam. Um, I love jam anyway. So I eat peanut butter every day. Peanut, peanut butter on my toast. And I know that this, put this on, my, on the bread with, with peanut butter. It's going to be oh so good. And you look at the jams you buy in the store. The jams you buy in the store have a lot of chemicals in them. You don't want chemicals in your food. You want stuff in there that you know is not going to harm you. I don't want to put chemicals in my body. I've, <laughs> I did that way too long. Too many years I ate things I shouldn't have eaten and put chemicals in my body. And I don't want to do that anymore. I want to get rid of all those chemicals. Um, now, yeah, I do use natural peanut butter too. I use Skippy natural peanut butter. Um, there's one that's got honey and there's one, uh, and there's one without honey. I've used both. So there's also an Adam's peanut butter. You have to stir that. It's organic. You have to stir that one, um, because the oil separates from the peanut butter. But yes, I do use natural peanut butter. I used to use Jif years ago, but I won't use that anymore because it's not as good for you as your natural peanut butter would be. You know, like your Skippy on um, your Adams or any other kind of peanut butter that's out there. There's, there's several different kinds of natural peanut butter. I don't particularly care for Adams peanut butter because I don't like the taste of it too well. I have used it before. I have bought it. And I've used it, but I just don't like the flavor of it. My son swears by it. He loves that Adam's peanut butter. But I just don't care for it. I like Skippy because it's got a good flavor to it. Um, Laura Scudder. Um, what, what about Laura Scudder? I don't understand what you mean about Laura Scudder. Um, I don't understand what you mean. Uh... Oh, there's somebody, there's a bot. Block that one. Um, somebody, <laughs> somebody, uh, I don't have my moderators in here right now, so I have to take care of it. But what about Laura Scudder, Jason? Because you, you posted something about Laura Scudder. Um, you know, I watch a lot of YouTube videos, but that name isn't familiar to me at all. I, I don't know, understand who she is. I, I've never heard of her. I suppose I'd have to Google her and we'll find out. But, um, a lot of the, in fact, this recipe for I'm doing right that I just did, I found it on YouTube. Because I, I last night I went to bed and I was, I always take my iPad in the bed, in the bed and I start, you know, searching for things. And I had thought, well, I'm gonna see if I can find a chia seed pudding. Well, when I come across this, it was a jam. I says, hey, now I'm gonna make a jam because I've made puddings before, but I've never made the blueberry jam. Now the recipe called for mixed berries. Hi, Alexis. Here <coughs> I'll show you my. My jam. It has, it has to cool, cool in the refrigerator, get cold in the refrigerator. But see, isn't that a nice consistency? Put it in the refrigerator and it'll get nice and, and thicker. And it's got, it's got, uh, it's got co coconut sugar in it. It's got uh, a half, half a cup of chia seeds, a cup and a half of water, um, coconut sugar. Hey, stop. And what else did I put in it? Oh, and then two cups of yeah, two cups of blueberries. So it's going to be a real good consistency, I think. I got to let it cool off for a little bit, and then I got to put it. Um, <laughs> yeah, my dog. She's the female. She was barking at something. I thought it would be Chewy barking, but it was her. But I'm going to put it in this jar if I can get it in here. Another I have a bigger jar, but store it in a jar because I want to eat a lot of. I like I like peanut butter on my bread in the morning, my toast in the morning. This could taste real good up on top. It's real good. It's, it's a simple recipe, and you could make it too, Alexis. It calls for brown sugar. I didn't happen to have any brown sugar, so I used coconut sugar. I thought, well, coconut sugar will work just as well because it's brown anyway. It's going to taste just as good, and it does. It tastes real good. You know, you just have to make sure you get your, your chia seeds soaked real good in your cup and a half of water and... <clears throat> And then get your put your blueberries, your sugar in it, and your blueberries last. And I tried to mash them up the best I could. I don't, don't have to mash them up perfect. But I got used frozen blueberries is what I used. Hi, good to see you. Welcome. Good to see you. Um, this is my 
Jay, I gotta put in the refrigerator, but there's if you, what you can see is my jam. And I'll, I'll tell you those that are just coming in, that it's a uh, two, um, oh, thank you. It's a cup and a half of water, a half a cup of chia seeds, a cup of, it calls for brown sugar. Since I didn't have brown sugar, I used coconut sugar and two cups of, they say mixed berries, but I didn't have those either. So I use regular, I use blueberries because I have plenty of blueberries. So they say you could use blueberries. You can make apricot jam. You can make strawberry jam, blueberry jam, peach jam, probably apple jam, any kind of jam you want. They suggest more or less using more of the um, frozen than the, than the fresh because of the liquid consistency but it's up to you now i had frozen blueberries from smoothies in my freezer thought might as well use them because they they you know i gotta get my refrigerator my freezer cleaned out um yeah we do have blueberries here i haven't picked any in a long time though i've got to um somebody's talking must be talking to alexis but anyway um this is going to be a real good jam. I've already tasted it. It's got a real good flavor to it. I think that's going to be fine for what I'm using it for because I'm putting it on toast because we know jam, once it gets in the refrigerator, and I did put a little arrowroot in it to kind of thicken it up a little bit, which you didn't have to do. Somebody suggested arrowroot will help thicken it up. But once it gets in the refrigerator, it'll be nice and solid anyway because uh, it, when it gets cold, it will go right in. Um, No, I haven't. <laughs> no, I haven't, and I don't. I wouldn't. I don't scope on Fridays now, anyway, because it's a it's a short day for me. So, when did they when did they do this, Alexis? Uh, I'm not really sure. Um, if you, I've got a container like this. As you can see, this container. This would be a real good container. It probably keep a long while in here. Um, that's the containers I like to use. I've had jam before, uh, strawberry jam. It was made a lot differently than this, and it lasted a long time. So I think it'll keep. It'll keep uh, did they? So are you going to scope tomorrow, or are you going to have to forget it? Why did Why they do that? Is it because of George Bush's funeral, or why? Why they say no scope on Friday? Which shot that has nothing to do with it. But what they come along with that for? Is that is that temporary or is that permanent? Uh, oh, you don't know. Okay. I just wonder if it's temporary or permanent. Well, I don't come in on Fridays anyway. Uh, bullied for doing it? Oh, good gracious. Oh, my goodness. That is plain ridiculous. Well, I just wonder how many people will periscope tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know. You know, it's it's temporary, but that is, you know, that's awful. That you can't do anything without somebody bullying you or something, you know. Oh my goodness, <laughs> you just say the wrong or do the wrong thing, and they're and they're and they're censoring you. <laughs> oh, that! Oh, really? Oh my! A Russian invasion? Oh my! Well, I've got according to Periscope. Now I see. I've got 184,800, but according to Periscope, I've got 184,101 super hearts. They say I need 899. That doesn't compute to me. How they come up with 899, and mine says overall 184,800. How they coming up with that? I thought it was, it doesn't compute to me. So I thought I only need 200, but I need 899. Oh, well, it is what it is. <laughs> uh, oh, you know that you know that's that's crazy. I never come in here and ask for super hearts. Oh. I know, I know. I I never come in here and ask for super hearts. I'm happy when I get them, but I don't ask for them. If people want to give them to me, that's fine. And I know you get them all the time, Alexis. So you don't ask for me either, but you get them. I, I I like the other hearts as well too. But when I do get them, I'm really grateful for it because I'm so close to my my uh, super uh, super broadcast status that I could just taste it. And it's been a long, long, long time coming. Long time. This would be my first time cashing out. So what does that tell you? I don't get them too often. Some people get them every time they periscope. Some don't. You know, I just don't happen to be one of those kind of very lucky to get them. Now, yesterday I got over 4,000. You know, each day is different. I don't ask for them. Um, 
Oh, right. I, I understand that. Yeah, I understand that. Yep, I know. But they don't understand. Um, the super, super hearts, you know, it's Periscope that started that, and they're the ones that said they would pay us. Well, I decided, well, if they're going to do that, I'm going to go for it and put it back into my, my ministry, to, to, into my cooking scopes, put it into the, into the um, making or uh, buying yarn for the, for the, uh, to make things for the homeless. That's what I put it back in there for. That's where it'll go. It goes right back into to, uh, helping with my ministry. And people shouldn't be complaining about that, you know, but it's... <laughs> That you're right. You're right, Alexis. I don't understand that. I know. You know, that's terrible. You know. Um, I, 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 you know, I, and it, it's, a, it's sad. Well, if they don't come into your scope, Alexis, probably count it a blessing. You don't need people like that in your scope. If they're going to complain about it all the time, I mean, you had enough problems after you got those, those, that week or so of those scopes. If you got, oh my gosh, maybe a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand every day. I mean, when you got that, you didn't need a, you didn't need anything else. And you got a lot of people complaining about that, saying you didn't get it legitimately. Well, I'd like to tell them, yes, you did. It wasn't your fault. You didn't ask for that many people to come in your Periscope. You were happy they did, you know. But you were you were thankful that you got them. You were able to get um, your gold 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 status. I'm still working on mine, but you know something? If I never get gold status, I sure am not going to be upset about it at all. I've got my silver, and I'm happy with it. It took me a while to get that, but I'm happy. Um, that's what they're complaining about. Well, they they don't know it. They don't have anything to complain about. Well, thank you, those that come in here, and thank you for sharing this out. They, they have nothing to complain about. Well, they could easily do the same thing you're doing, Alexis. Instead of complaining about it, why don't they do something about it? You know, that, that irks me when people do that, complain about somebody else cashing in. And they could do the very same thing if they had a mind to, but they don't want to do it. Uh. Yeah, that's right. Jealousy is right. I'm so happy, Je Alexis, that you've made, your, you know, you've made it more than once, and I'm so happy for you. You deserved it. I'm really, really glad that you did. I'm not jealous one bit because these people that make it, it's well-deserved, you know. So I, I don't complain about it. If I don't ever make it, huh, I'm not going to worry about it. Because it's not meant to be. But I'm sure not going to get jealous of those that make it. You know. No, she doesn't. She comes into my scopes. And I don't know where she's at today. But she doesn't scope at all. Um, that's right. Yeah. They don't want to do the work. They don't want to come in here. And they don't want to take the time. Hi, Artis. Good to see you. Here's my, here is my jam that I made. As you can see, it looks pretty good. I got to put it in a jar. And put it in the refrigerator. They don't want to take the time to come in here and periscope and try to get the viewership. No, they would rather complain about people that are working towards getting what they need. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. Why complain about it? <laughs> you know, don't complain about, about people, people working for it. You've worked for it, and I'm getting close to having mine. We're, we're working for it. We're coming in here, and we're doing a meaningful scope. The problem of it is some people's scopes are not very meaningful. I uh, know um, they don't have a lot to say, and yet people will, you know, still give them super hearts. That's true, but too, but um, yeah, you're right. They're always going to exist. They're always going to exist. I know Deb, her being in here, she gets a lot of people in her periscope too. She gets well over a thousand of hers every, every day. I often wonder why I can't be so lucky to get that many in my periscope, but you know, I have off days. I figure, well, they'll come in if they want to, and if they don't want to, they won't. I mean, you know, one day I had 14,000, and, was nice, and that wasn't even featured. I had 14,000 just a few days ago. So, it, it does, you know, it all depends. Um, oh, I know. There sure is, and I can't stand that. I don't care for that. When I see nudity, that's the bots. Those sex bots are a bunch of nudity, and that's not right. Or showing their, showing their breasts or something like that. Why do that? I'm not into those kind of periscopes. I keep myself covered up. And if I see somebody dressed like that, I just stay out of there. Because that, that, that's humiliating to me. It's offensive to me to see them dressed like that. They should keep themselves covered up. You know, I work hard. And, you know, and I know Deb, she's worked hard. She's got a lot of, a lot of viewership. And she's managed to get herself super broadcaster. And I'm happy for her too. 
She's done it several times, and I know you have too, Alexis. We all work together to try to help each other to become, to become super broadcasters. If we don't get there for a while, it's no big deal. But at least I'm coming on here and I'm doing something meaningful. I'm doing recipes. You're welcome. I'm doing recipes. I'm trying to show other people how to, how to cook and that and using Pampered Chef tools too. If they don't want to come in and watch the Periscopes, well, then that's, that's totally up to them. I'm not going to force anybody to, to come in here. I share it out, and I'm able to get some replay viewers from that, but I'm not getting last few days I haven't got much viewership. It's been off a little bit. And I suppose you get those days, too, where the people just aren't going to come in. But what can you do, you know? <laughs> it is what it is. You can't force them to come in. I've shared this more than once, and I shared it out myself on Facebook and Twitter. Yeah. Yeah, I know. People are out shopping for the holidays. You're probably right. You're you're probably right that that's what they're at. They're, they're out. Um. Oh, I am definitely going to keep doing what I do. Definitely. Because if I don't keep doing what I'm doing, I'm going to be miserable. Because when I come in here, I'm really happy for coming in here and doing what I'm able to do. I I like doing this. I like sharing with other people. I like teaching them what I've learned so that they can do the same thing too. Um, not everybody's going to come in here and, and come into my scopes because of the way I cook. But that's okay. Alexis gets a lot because she's not vegan. She's going to get a lot more than me because people don't want to don't want to see vegan vegan cooking scopes. You know, that doesn't bother me. You know, I'm still going to continue to do it anyway. Um, there are people out there that do choose to watch vegan cooking scopes, and those are the kind that I'll get. Um, <clears throat> that's right. Exactly. You're right, Alexis. It does bring us joy. Absolutely. I, don't, I would not be happy if I couldn't do this in here. You know, since I've been coming in here and sharing these periscopes out, I've been very happy about it. <clears throat> I've really enjoyed, really been enjoyed um, coming in here and, and teaching you what I what I know using the, the the Pampered Chef tools like Alexis does, showing you how to use them. You know, and I I enjoy that so much. And I would be miserable if I couldn't come on here and do this anymore. If I got censored for one reason or another because I couldn't do it anymore, I would not be happy. But you know something. As long as God gives me life and gives me breath, I'm going to keep coming in here anyway. Um, oh, good. Thank you. See, that's what I'm saying. Alexis isn't vegan either, but yes, she does come in my periscopes and she does support me. And I appreciate that. And um, she's, not, she's not vegan, but I do go in her periscopes as well and when I can and watch her replays so, and support her. So we all support each other. That's what it's about. Supporting each other. Um, Helping each other out, because that's that's what it's all about. You know, I, don't, I come in here because everybody supports me. Um, you're vegan-ish. <laughs> Plant-based. That's right. Exactly. That's right. I don't force anybody to come, become vegan, because I know I, I'm vegan. If they don't want to become vegan, I always, when I post my recipes up on, on uh, Facebook, I put in there what the original recipe was written as. And I put in, and then I put my parentheses what I use. So they can feel free to use their refined sugar, their brown sugar, their cocoa powder, if it's a chocolate recipe or whatever. I'm not forcing them to do what I do. If they want to do the way I do, that's fine. You know, but I, I'm not going to force anybody. You love blackberry? You, you know, you can use any kind of fruits in here you want. Now, they use mixed berries, but you can use um, raspberries, strawberries, blueberries you could probably use peach you could use apricot you could make any of these hi marion good to see you welcome you could use any fruits that you want to make the um jam yes here's my jam as you can see i gotta put it in the refrigerator but there it is um to, to um thicken up hi good to see you welcome um this was a very simple jam oh yeah apricot you know i've never had apricot jam one of these times I'm going to buy apricots and um, I'm, going to, I'm going to try to make an apricot jam. I would make it the same way as this. Just use it and put chia seeds in it. It's so good. That's This has chia seeds in it, which chia seeds are very good for omega-3s. Um, okay, bring it up here. Um, omega-3s. See? Look at that. Nice and thick. See how it is on the spoon? I 
I've got one, Alexis, right here. I've got a spoon right here. Here, see, I'll show you. See? See how thick? It's nice and thick. Of course, when you set it in the refrigerator, it's going to get thicker. This It's this color because it's got blueberries in it. It's got chia seeds. I've got black chia seeds in it. And blueberries. It's going to be this color. Um, but it's going to taste really good anyway. You don't have to have... Um... Well... I don't know what it shows you on here, but it is, it's a darker color because the chia seeds are black. Your blueberries are blue, but see, we can see on the spoon, it's a dark color, a real dark color. See, it almost looks black or a black purple, but that's what color it is. It doesn't matter. It's going to be fine because it's, it's got blueberries in it. We know blueberries are purple. You know, your the chia seeds and yours water, it's going to come up a darker color anyway because this has a half a cup of chia seeds in it, your water. It's got your blueberries. I've got two cups of blueberries and a cup of coconut sugar. Um, uh, these here. Uh, I gotta get that. Oh, I gotta get that and deleted. I can't. Can't. Um, yeah, the chia seeds are black. Yes, there are. I guess there's white chia seeds too. But uh, yes, you probably could use apple. You probably could. Let me get this one. Um, I can't get that one. Uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, mock, there, there, I, I bought one to blocky. I couldn't get that thing blocked and wouldn't let me. But anyway, yeah, the chia seeds are black. I guess they have white chia seeds too. But I bought these at, at uh, Walmart. They're in a container. They're organic. And I keep them in the refrigerator once the container is open because they keep much better. So I keep them in the refrigerator and use them as I need them. But I'm always trying to find something to, with chia seeds because they're a good antioxidant. They have a lot of omega-3s. You could eat chia seeds every day and they never harm you. Not a bit. So that's why I decided, well, I want to make a chia seed jam. You know, I've made, I've made chia seed pudding with uh, chia seeds and, and almond milk. But this is a little bit different because it's a jam you put on your toast in the morning. And since I eat toast every morning, huh, this is going to be good on peanut butter, on the bread. My goodness, there's a bread that I, that I buy that it's a real good bread. It's the best bread ever. It's the loaf, the lo loaves are real thick. Um, your slices are real thick, and I I use them to uh, um, eat with toast. Let me wash my hands a little bit. You with toast, it's real good. So I I, I eat I eat cereal. Um, I don't eat. Hi Mark, good to see. You. I don't eat cereal every day. I eat maybe twice a week or something. Here is my chia seed. Now see how thick this is. It's, I put a little arrowroot in. Somebody suggested a little arrowroot, which it doesn't call for, but you put arrowroot in to thicken up a little bit more. So I did put a little arrowroot in it and put it on the stove again. See how thick it really is. It's starting to thicken up now. When I put it in the refrigerator, it won't get thicker yet because you want it thick enough to go on your toast in the morning. Um, chia seeds, like I said, are a real good antioxidant. I read something, and I heard somebody say that if, you're, if you want to lose weight, eat chia seeds. I did not know that. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm losing weight and not eating that many chia seeds. I told my daughter that this morning. She said, well, Mom, that's interesting because she's wanting to lose weight. I says, well, if you want to lose weight, get yourself some chia seeds and fix those and eat them. Hi, good to see you. Welcome. Thank you for coming in. And start, I told her, I said, start eating chia seeds and you'll lose weight. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if she's going to or not because uh, she's a little heavier than she needs to be. But she eats all the wrong foods, basically. But... I'm trying to, and I'm, I share this on Facebook and, and Twitter, and her sister-in-law happens to see see stuff I've made, and she says, Mom, did you make a gravy the other day? I says, yeah, why? She says, well, because Tammy was watching Twitter, and she saw you on Periscope. I says, yep, I shared it on Twitter, so she saw me make the gravy. She said she wanted to try it. So, see, it, it does pay. It does pay to share this out, because other people will want to do the same thing. They'll want to make the same thing. It's a lot of fun, I tell you. I have so much fun. Looking for recipes every day. I never know from one day to the next what recipes I'm going to find. But I found this one on YouTube because I was I went to bed last night and I says, oh, I'm going to kind of search for something with chia seeds. First of all, I started looking for chia seed pudding. And I kept going on down. I thought, well, I didn't like some of them they were making. But then I saw this and it come up jam. I says, wow, I'll make this jam. So then I made this jam and I am going to really like it. And the what? <laughs> And those that were in my Periscope yesterday and watched me make the pecan bars, unfortunately, it could have been my fault. I don't know what. Maybe I didn't leave them cool long enough. 
but they all fell apart. It's nothing but a crumbled mess. So I couldn't post it up on Facebook. I and now that it's now that they're colder and <laughs> I, I I tried cutting one that was a crumbled mess and it stayed together. So maybe that was my fault. I guess I'll have to do better next time. I thought I could just leave it cool for a short time, but I guess I had to leave it cool all the way. Anyway, you live and learn. I've had a blunders before, you know. <clears throat> but this will definitely go up on Facebook. <clears throat> post it on Facebook, post it in my group. <clears throat> and those that don't know, I've got a I've got a uh Facebook group group called Karen's Vegan Heaven, and uh, thank, thankful to Alexis for picking out that name, and I've got 270 or 80 some members in there, I think, um, you just have to ask to be approved for the group, and I, I go in there every day and check it to see who's on, who's coming in there, who's posting recipes, because I have to approve any recipes like you do, Alexis, I, I have it set up that way to approve them, and then I, approve, I look at them, and then I approve them afterwards. Um, oh, you're so welcome, Alexis, and you have a great afternoon. Bye-bye. Um, but I enjoy, I'm, I enjoy making things that, um, are simple. See, this is getting thicker and thicker and thicker. Isn't that pretty? I did, I mashed some of the blueberries, too, so. Yeah, this one will be, too. This has to be refrigerated, yes. You put, you put jam in the refrigerator anyway. It'll get thicker, and it'll, it'll be easier to spread it. So I'm definitely going to, hi, Ann, good to see you. Here is my chia seed jam, a blueberry chia seed jam. See how thick it is? I have to put it in the refrigerator, put it in a jar, which I intend to do. Put it in a jar and put it in the refrigerator. When I get off of here, that's what I'm going to do with it. And have it tomorrow morning for breakfast. But I want to leave it sit out so you guys could see it. It's very simple to make. It takes a cup and a half of water, a half a cup of chia seeds. It's all on the stove. Um, I put a cup of... Uh, Coconut sugar in it. Any lemon in the jam? No, not in this one. I put and I put coconut sugar. Some people do add lemon. You can choose to to make, to put it in there if you want to. No um, recipe is set in stone. In other words, if you see a recipe and you want to make it, make it your own. You can add whatever you want to it. If you want to put lemon in it, go right ahead and put lemon in it. If you don't want to put lemon in it, don't. This didn't call for lemon, so I didn't put it in there. Cup and a half of water, a half a cup of chia seeds, two cups of blueberries, a cup of, it called for brown sugar. I didn't have any, so I used coconut sugar, which is brown anyway, and it's organic coconut sugar. So I put that in it, and it tastes really good because I've already tasted it. It is really, really good. Nice, nice flavor. I'm definitely going to make this again. I just had some frozen blueberries in the freezer. That's why I'm going to buy them. Buy frozen blue blueberries and make you can make jams with them. That's a good way to use them up. I I got it particularly for my smoothies, but I wasn't wasn't eat, drinking smoothies like I thought. Well, I said, well, I can use this for the jam. So any other fruits and stuff I got in the freezer, I can make jam out of it. If it's mixed fruit, just use that. As long as I have two cups and and make a good nice jam, you could you could have raspberries and blackberries and strawberries mixed together, or you can just have plain strawberries or plain blackberries or raspberries could make a peach one or apricot um he he is yes it has so far he is still there but he will be coming home tomorrow um he'll be leaving tomorrow he won't be going home get home till saturday however they are 10 hours ahead so i do not know what time he's leaving there because when i go to bed at 10 o'clock at night it's already eight o'clock in the morning there so i don't know if he's leaving at that time or a little after because he's got a flight from there to Istanbul, which is only an hour and a half, but he's got a, he's got a flight to Boston that's a nine hour flight. Yes, it is a long flight. So he said he won't, he'll be in Boston tomorrow night, but then he has to fly from Boston to Portland, which is another six to eight hour flight. And then, and then he's got to fly from Portland to Seattle, then from Seattle to Eugene. So he won't get home until Saturday after we get out of, get out of church. My, my daughter-in-law said she got to pick him up at the airport. So, He's got a long flights coming up again, but he's been posting pictures every day of his trip, you know, and he got to see the, um, uh, the pool of Bethesda where the blind man got healed in the pool of Bethesda. He got to, and I, I saw the picture of that and I says, oh my goodness, how cool is that? <coughs> he got to see, uh, he saw the tomb where Jesus was laid. You know, he was put in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, he even got to see the inside of the tomb. Got to got to see that. I mean, he there he got to see 
about everything he wants to see. And he said he'll never look at the Bible another, the same way again. Because it brings the Bible to life for him. Because, you know, he walk, he's walking on the streets that Jesus walked on. He's seeing some, uh, some of the sights, you know, uh, of the Holy, Holy Land, you know. And their architectural there is sure different. You know, everything's made out of stone. Like I said, their, their roads are nothing but cobblestone. You walk down cobblestone streets or whatever you want to call them. You know, they're nothing like we have here. But so far, it has gone okay. Um, he just has to have that long the long flights home. He's got two long flights, a nine-hour flight and another another six or eight-hour flight. So he's got two long flights to that he has to come home on. So... But I'm, I'm thinking he's going to be anxious to get home. I'm sure, I'm sure he is. He's going, <laughs> probably Saturday night he'll go to bed early. He'll have jet lag and he'll want to go to bed early. He'll be so tired from all the flying that he's done. But I'm glad that he got to go. It was an experience that any of us would love to have. I would love to have the experience myself. But him just being there, my a family member being there, really made me feel good to know that he got to go. Even if I never did, even if my ex-husband doesn't or the rest of the family doesn't get to go, he got to go. He got to see sites that we only think about, we only read about. You talk, you read about it in the Bible, you know, and you picture it. When I, when I see the pictures on Facebook, I like to close my eyes and envision that I'm there. Yeah, it is awesome. I like to close my eyes when, I, when he posts those pictures up there and envision myself walking down those cobblestone streets and seeing the same thing he's seeing. It is awesome. He is going to... Uh, do a sermon probably sometime in January, I suppose now, because I think December's all booked up for preachers now. But he's going to preach, preach probably sometime next year, January, February, maybe whatever, on his trip to Israel and show what he took pictures of. It's going to be a beautiful sermon. Um, yes, he is going to share his experience. He's going to share his experience with the church members. He's been sharing it on Facebook, and he's going to share it uh, with the church members as well. We're all looking forward to that. Because I know it'll be a beautiful sermon. It's something that um, we can close our eyes and envision us being there at that time. You know, he went to Megiddo. He's gone to Jerusalem. He's gone to Bethlehem. Of course, that's under Palestinian rule. So the their tour guide was not allowed to to uh, since he's a tour guide and he's Jewish. Since it's over Palestinian rule, he's not allowed to be their tour guide. He could go along, but he wasn't allowed to to show them the places. So they had to do it on their own. You know, so, you know, that's the way it is. You know, you, I, and I didn't realize that that's under Palestinian rule. You know, that's that's sad, but, you know, it is what it is, you know. And we know that they've been fighting <laughs> for years, you know. So the Israelis and the Arabs have been fighting for years, and that's probably going to continue until Jesus comes. You know, it's, it's going to continue. They're not going to get along. You always got wars and rumors of wars it talks about. And so far, he hasn't come across anything where there's problems. He did... He did post a picture, though, on Facebook um, of, of the protesters in downtown. Um, in, <clears throat> I think in Israel, someplace in downtown, one of those cities. I thought, oh my goodness, they even have protests there. They have protest signs and everything. Wow. <laughs> Maybe think of here. I didn't think they would ever have protests there, but evidently they do. But it, as far as I know, so far it's gone real good. He's, he's got glad he's got to go. Um, he would have never got to go on his own. If he had to pay for it, he would have never got to go because he couldn't afford it. But it, by his way being paid paid for him, he was able to go and able to experience only something that we, we've all wanted to experience. You know, he probably never thought he'd ever get there. But now he's got something to write home about. And I know I know what will be on Christmas. He'll have me looking uh, on his TV because he can put his stuff from his iPhone onto his TV because he's got Apple TV and show stuff on there, and I'll be so anxious because we're going to I'll get to see them before the church does. So I love those when he go when we can see pictures. I can see pictures like that, and we can he can reminisce. I love that those holidays because we reminisce about old times. See pictures of where where he grew up. You know he likes to show those pictures. Of course I, you know, I remember remember it very well because I was there. You know and the pictures he took of last year because he went back to Indiana. He hadn't been there since we left there, and he wanted to take his wife and kids there to Indiana and show them where he where he where he lived on the farm, where he grew up, and they really enjoyed that trip. He took pictures and got to see the um, his cousins. He got to see uh, my sister-in-law, my brother's my of course he's dead now, but my brother's ex-wife. He got to see her, so it was amazing that he got to spend time 
with the family back there. People I never get to see, but I do see them on Facebook and I talk to them on Facebook, what have you. But it's not the same as going to visit them and seeing them. So last year he took a trip. This year he took a trip. He's planning on going back to Indiana next year to take his dad. I don't know if he's going to get there or not. After this trip, he may not. <laughs> he may not even get there. I don't know. He's probably after, after, you know, he's probably done flying for a while because it's been just a little bit much. But thank you all for coming in. I'm, this is my, see how thick this is getting now? I know. I know. I was not invited. He was the one paid. It was paid for him. I didn't. They, whoever paid for it, I have no idea. If somebody from the church paid for it, whoever paid for it only paid for him. So he's the only one from the church that got to go. So um, so we're all looking forward to him coming back. Um, I'm going to have to block that one. Block that one. So I'm going to be looking forward to that because I I um, have never been over there. And just just seeing the pictures on Facebook, Makes me appreciate the Bible that much more. It should. Makes us appreciate Jesus and the Bible that much more. Seeing seeing those pictures of the Holy Land, you know, um, it's it's really amazing. And, you know, I'd like to get there someday, but, you know, if I don't, I'm not worried about it. Because um, he got to go, and that's good enough for me. One family member got to go, and I'll cherry, and I know he'll have that to cherish the rest of his life. And I'll, I can see those pictures on Facebook. You know, and look, going back in his profile and looking at him every day if I want to. You know, um, I, oh, absolutely, absolutely makes him come to life. Oh, yeah, he probably, <laughs> I tell you, after these, after the flights he's got from Istanbul to Boston, a nine hour flight, and then from Boston to Portland, about six to eight hours. Yeah, he's going to be tired of flying after that. I don't mind flying. But I don't like the real long flights either because you have no way to stretch your legs. You're cramped up. Unless you can get up and walk around the aisles, you can't normally because they make you keep your seatbelt on, you know. You know, they prefer you keep your seatbelt on even, re even when they remove the seatbelt sign. You know, yeah, jet lag. He's certainly going to have that for sure. And he's been a whole week over there, you know, with our time. Now he comes back home. He's going to have to get adjusted to our time all over again. He's been 10 hours ahead. And right now... It's about one, probably, what is it, one o'clock or so in the morning, one thirty in the morning or whatever it is there. So he's in bed right now. Um, how is his health? Well, he's had real good health with the exception of the skin cancer he has right on his right eye, um, somewhere right in here. He's got cancer, skin cancer on his right eye. And on January 16th, he has to go and have surgery and have it dug out. And I hope and that they'll get it, take care of it. My daughter-in-law says, oh, it's nothing to worry about, Karen. It'll be fine. But still, you know, she had breast cancer. We almost lost her. I know skin cancer, you know, his, what he's, what the one he has is not a melanoma. He said what it was, and I can't quite remember what it is, but it's a slow growing cancer. It doesn't grow very fast and it's growing very, very slow. So um, I'm thankful for that. So uh, they'll, they'll cut it out, and hopefully they'll get it all, and it won't come back. Yeah, I think it's because he works out in the sun um, as a carpenter. Well, as a, ah, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't say as a carpenter, as a painter. He's, he's got a painting business, and he's a, he's a painter. And he paints houses on the inside and outside. And when he's outside painting, he's out in that sun. He doesn't wear any sunscreen. He doesn't wear, I think he might wear sunglasses, but he doesn't put sunscreen on. So, therefore, it affected his eyes. Um, yeah, he realizes that now, that he's got to use sunblock. You know, maybe, and I hate to say this, maybe it was a blessing in disguise this happened, even though I don't like anybody to get cancer. Hi, good to see you. Welcome. Um, no, I don't eat mushrooms. Mushrooms are, are a fungus. You know, we don't eat anything with a fungus. But anyway, you know, him getting skin cancer might have been a blessing in disguise because he he he's learning what what he did was wrong, not eating, not not using sunblock, and he and he's going to have to pay for it. And he's paying for it. Um, yeah, I know. I I took care of it. He's um, so he realizes that he. I think the doctor probably told him when he went in to get his you know biopsy taken. Well, it took him about a week to get to get the results back. And when he called me a week ago today, um, he told me that the biopsy had come back, that he was he had skin cancer. 
And I thought, oh no, why did it have to come back on a day when he was when he was planning on leaving the next day? It couldn't have happened at a worse time. He was apprehensive about the trip because of the flying. And then to have this on his shoulders too, a little bit too much. But I think once January 16th rolls around, he has it removed. He just goes to a clinic, to an in, it's in and out, and has it removed. Everything will be okay. But I told him, I said, wear sunblock from now on. Don't go without sunblock. He's probably one of these kind, and a lot of people are like this, thought he was tough and he didn't need to wear sunblock. You know, oh, I don't need to wear sunblock. But when he works out in the sun all day like he does painting houses, you know, and here in Oregon, it can get really hot. We could get 100 degrees or more, and that sun beats down on you, and it's going to really burn you bad. He's probably gotten a lot of sunburns, and then it got into skin cancer. I think now he'll wear sunblock, and he realizes now he's going to have to. It's a wake-up call. It was a blessing in disguise to wake him up to realize he should have been wearing sunblock in the first place. Maybe he won't, he'll realize now that he needs to wear sunblock, and he won't do it again. Um, no, I was born in Indiana. I've only been in Oregon since 19, um, or 2007, excuse me, 2007 when I moved, uh, actually I moved to Oregon in 2006, bought this house in 2007. Um, yes, it is. It's called, called God's Country. I was born and raised in Indiana. I lived in Indiana most of my life, um, up until 18 years of age. And after my husband and I got married, then we moved out of Indiana and he wanted to come to, we didn't right away, so we didn't move to, um. Oregon. He lived here in Oregon when we got married. We lived here in, in Oregon for a while. Then he moved up to to uh, Vancouver, Washington is where he still is. Then I came back here when I we got a divorce because my son lives here in Oregon. So, but I've been I was born and bra 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 raised in, in in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Uh, it just depends. It it really just depends. It's not bad. I mean, um, it's not. Huh, it's not as bad as California. California, you got you got sales tax there, and you got income tax. Here, we do not have any sales tax. We don't have sales tax on any of, any of the food, any of the groceries you buy. There's no, there's not taxed. But we do have a high income tax, about a ten percent. Now, my ex-husband, he lives in Washington State. They don't have income tax, but they do have sales tax. So. He has to pay sales tax, but they, he doesn't have to file income tax. Um, yes, it is. It's very pretty. There, Vancouver, Washington is very, very pretty. I liked it there, but, you know, we got a divorce. He didn't want to be married to me anymore, so I had to leave. You know, I didn't want to, but I was forced to. And then, after I left there, then he just then he tries to take me back. We're right in the divorce proceedings, and, you know, I, and I was... Um, you know, I guess I was smart at the time and said, no, I'm not taking you back. Hi, good to see you. But sometimes I wish I had maybe try to make it work out, but I was, I was hurt. So I said, no, I'm not taking you back. So I didn't. Um, yes. Yes, he is. Definitely. Yep. I've got a son and a daughter and I had another daughter that she was still born in 1975. No, not 75, 77. Cause my other daughter is 75. The one's alive now. But so I had, my son was born in 72, my um, daughter that's in Missouri was born in 75, then the daughter that I lost was born on August 27th, 1977, and died that day because she was stillborn. So I've had three children, so. Oh, thank you. It's okay. You're, oh, you're in Missouri. Oh, my daughter is in House Springs. Do you know where House Springs at? Um, she's in House Springs. She doesn't like it where she's at, but it's, it's okay. Um, oh, I don't have any moderators today, so I got to take care of all these bots. Um, it's, it, you know, I've dealt with it. The only problem I'm, I will, I, I will arises is every year on the 27th of August. Oh, you're Kansas City, Missouri. Okay. Know where that's at. Anyway, I've never been through Kansas City, but okay. Um, I, I'm okay with, with it. You know, I've gotten used to my daughter not being around, you know, but, um, the worst thing of it is, is on August 27th every year is when I, I, the tears just flow. I'll sit there in my chair and I'll just start bawling because I know that she's gone. And I think that's to be expected. You know, it's go, it, it's something that you you can never live down. 
I was watching something on the Columbine shooting, you know, that happened in April of 2000 or, or 1999. They're still every year on the anniversary. They still think about what they what what happened to them. Even the survivors had to have some kind of a therapy because to go through all that. The families are still having to cope with the loss of their children. It's sad. Um, I know. I can't either. I, I can't imagine that loss either, you know. And the mothers of the boys that did that, that's got to be hard for them too. They've lost too because their boys took their own lives. You know, that's sad too. You know, it, it's, it's terrible. We know the world is corrupt. The world is really bad. Things are happening all the time, you know. But it is what it is, you know. <clears throat> And we have to just, we have to deal with it, you know. But like I said, every every anniversary, every year on August 27th, when um, I'm just, that anniversary rolls around on my daughter's death, then I just, I just bawl because I, I, you know, she was stillborn. But, you know, that's bad, but, but to lose your child through, through murder has really got to be bad. And, and the one suffering with that every year on the anniversary of their child's death, that has to be the hardest thing of all. Um. No, I know it shouldn't, but it did. It did. Um, it, it, it did because of the doctor's negligence. He was negligent in that, um, I don't like to go into great detail, but she suffocated in the birth canal. He would not pull her out, and she suffocated. He wouldn't let me push. And um, that's where the problem arose. And, and my husband and I, at the time, we thought about suing him, but then I said no. Let's let it go because he's going to get, you know, they say what goes around comes around. And it did for him because it wasn't too long after that. His son took his own life. You know, his son committed suicide. So there you go. What goes around comes around. You know, I know it is, it is inexcusable. That doctor was a quack. He was a doctor and he was not my normal doctor. He was on call for the doctor that I had for my daughter when she was born. My, my uh, little daughter I have now that's in Missouri, he was her doctor. But then I should have, he was, he was on, like I said, this Dr. Smith was on call for him. I didn't know anything about Dr. Smith. Boy, I was so upset after that. Never again. I had a different doctor for my son because I was in a different hospital altogether. But never again, you know. But like I told my husband at the time, this is what good is it going to do to sue him, you know. We may not get much money out of it. And like I said, what goes around comes around. He's going to get it back in the end. And he did. Like I said, his son committed suicide. So he got it back. You know, so, and that's what I said. What goes around comes around. Oh, thank you so much. You know, it's, it's, it's sad because I never got to see what kind of girl she was going to grow up to be. If she, You know, I never um, was able to see her get married, have children, you know, go to high school, um, no, I'm the only one that's vegan. My son is not vegan, but he, um, he's not against me being vegan. He just doesn't want to be. No, my, my, my other family, my son and my daughter-in-law and the two grandkids, my other daughter, my daughter, no, she's not vegetarian or vegan. <laughs> she's meat and everything. But anyway, my, uh, yes, I know. I, I will see her one day and I, I have that hope. But anyway, my son and my daughter-in-law and the two grandkids are vegetarians. They do eat, they don't eat eggs, but they still eat cheese and they drink milk, but they don't eat meat. They won't eat meat. They haven't, they haven't stopped eating the cheese yet. My son knows he shouldn't, shouldn't be eating the cheese, but you know, at least they aren't eating the meat anyway. So, but anyway, I just thought I'd show you a little bit more, one more time about my vegan, uh, and I will, I'm going to post this up on Facebook and, uh, I'm going to go for now. I won't be coming on tomorrow because it'll be a short day. So, and I don't want to come on and come on and get bullied because I'm coming on anyway. <laughs> I got no scope Friday. So, um, I'll come on Saturday morning for my church scope. So I'll be looking for that. So in the meantime, you guys have a great night. Take care. God bless. Love you all. And bye-bye.